Good afternoon, dear students. I'm Atadiana Lamaloha, and today in Practical Phonetics, we will speak about intonation, the role of intonation in our speech and intonation in different types of sentences. You know that at our previous lessons, we spoke about the correct pronunciation of speech sounds, both vowel sounds and consonant sounds. And uh, as a continuation of those lessons, today we will speak about intonation. And you know that uh, phonetics uh, is divided into two parts, uh, segmental phonetics and the supersegmental phonetics. And in uh, segmental phonetics, the learning object of segmental phonetics is the phoneme. And as for the supersegmental phonetics, the learning objects of supersegmental phonetics, in addition to uh, phoneme, uh, it is uh, syllable, uh, word stress, um, and um, voice stress and the sentence stress and uh, also intonation. Uh, today we will uh, discuss the matter of intonation. So what is intonation? Why do we need to learn intonation? Isn't only pronunciation is enough? So I'd like to answer no. Only correct pronunciation, knowing only correct pronunciation of speech sounds uh, is not enough to obtain an understandable and a fluent speech in a foreign language. Because uh, you know that uh, in our day, uh, in our everyday life, well, we may be in different types of situations. For example, we may be sad, we may be calm, we may be excited, we may be surprised, we may be worried, or we may be uh, uh, shocked, or we may be happy, or happiness sometimes. And, uh, in those situations of ours, we have to use different types of intonation in order to express all of our feelings and emotions to the listener completely. Uh, so that is why let's discuss the matter of intonation. Intonation is the music of the language. Uh, while the pronunciation of the uh, while the pronunciation is the body of the, of the language, intonation is the soul of it. Uh, uh, intonation in different types of intonation patterns in different types of sentences. So first of all, let's identify the types of sentences according to their purpose. According to the purpose, sentences uh, are subdivided into three types. Um, affirmative sentences, the, the so-called declarative sentences, uh, second interrogative sentences, and the, the last one is exclamatory sentences. So, uh, what about the intonation in uh, declarative sentences? You know that declarative sentences, uh, from the grammatical point of view, we know that uh, they inform us about something. And um, uh, let's write some uh, declarative sentences on the blackboard here. Uh, for example, I work at school. So uh, it is informing us about uh, this. Uh, I work at school. And what about the intonation of it? So uh, you know that uh, as you have just listened, I used I've used uh, falling intonation in uh, these uh, declarative sentences. Uh, as for the types of intonation, so uh, mainly it is distinguished two types of intonation: falling intonation and the rising intonation. And uh, falling intonation is uh, subdivided into three types: uh, low fall, low falling intonation. Uh, high fall and rise fall. So, as for the rising intonation, rise fall is divided into four types. For example, the first one is low, rise, high, rise, fall. Rise. And the next one is rise, full rise. Rise, full, rise. And uh, as you can see, as I have just told, falling tunes are divided into three types, and the rising tunes are divided into th uh, four types the rise, high rise, full rise, and the rise, full rise. And uh, in general, it is distinguished eight types of intonation. Uh, 
uh, in English language. So uh, here three plus four, they are seven, and the last one is the eighth one is need level two. Need level two. Need level. Two. This is the eighth one. So imagine that uh, we know only, for example, low falling nuclear tone, or uh, if we use, for example, mid level tone in our speech. So uh, I'd like to say that the rule of intonation in our speech is not only big. I'd like to say it's brilliant in our uh, speech. The rule of intonation, especially for uh, teachers. Um, so, uh, for example, imagine that we are having a class, um, we, are, we are conducting uh, a lecture in a lecture hall and there are about uh, 100 or more than 100 students in that lecture hall. And uh, if we speak, uh, we may be educated one, we may be very experienced teacher, but uh, what, about us, uh, what, about, uh, what about our intonation? So if we use only low falling nuclear tone, or if we use only mid level tone, for example, da -da 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 so it's very boring, and no one wants to listen to our speech, and it will be difficult to, for a teacher to manage the classroom. Before delivering the knowledge, the teacher should be able to manage the classroom. Then it will be easier for a teacher to uh, give the, his or her knowledge to the students, and. Um, uh, so with the help of different types of these types of intonation, we may make our speech colorful and attractive. And uh, only in this way, we may, uh, we may make our speech attractive and we may uh, manage our classroom. And uh, as for the intonation of this uh, affirmative sentence, uh, we've just used a low falling nuclear tone. I will repeat it. Let me repeat it once more. I work at school. I work at school. So have I used falling intonation or rising intonation? So uh, it's understandable enough that I used falling intonation in my sentence. Uh, so first of all, let's put the stress marks here. So we know that uh, the words uh, according to normal sentence stress are divided into two types. It is uh, Content words and the structure words. Content words are notional parts of speech, main parts of speech, and you know, uh, they are noun, verb, adverb, and adjective numerals. So they usually take stress in English language. As for the structure words, they are prepositions, conjunctions, articles, particles, and the pronouns also are included in structural words. So uh, usually, according to normal sentence stress, uh, all content words take stress in English language, and uh, as for structure words, uh, they usually remain unstressed. So that is why pronoun we remain here is remain here unstressed. And uh, as for the preposition at also unstressed, but um, prepositions may uh, make uh, may take a stress uh, when they come with the phrasal verb. For example, sit down or stand up. In this case, up and down and any kind of preposition may be stressed in phrasal verbs only. But here, it is not stressed. And as for school, it's as it's a noun, it surely takes stress. And why uh, I have put here? Why have I put here such kind of stress mark? Because it means the, the stress mark of a low falling nuclear tone. Low falling nuclear tone. This is a stress mark of a low falling nuclear tone. And uh, uh, let's intone this sentence according, according to these stress marks. So uh, I have ever explained you that in our previous lessons, uh, it is distinguished four pitch and stress sections of an intonation, which are called prehead, head, knee place, and the tail. So in the tonogram, you know that prehead, uh, as it has no any stress marks, uh, uh, in the tonogram uh, we mark it with a point like this. I work. Work is the head of the intonation. And uh, in the tonogram, we mark it with a horizontal straight line. And uh, as for the number of hertz, they may be one or more than one hertz in an intonation group. It depends on the number of stressed syllables in a sentence. 
And to ask for at here, it is unstressed syllable. We mark it like this with a point again. And as for the school, school is the last stressed syllable of an intonation, which is called the nucleus. So what is nucleus? Nucleus is the last stressed syllable of an intonation on which the direction of an intonation can be changed. It may fall or it may rise. It depends on the type of a sentence. As it is a declarative sentence, the nucleus, uh, the intonation in nucleus falls here. So here I will show you the tone mark of a low falling nuclear tone. It starts from medium pitch level and reaches up to the lowest pitch level like this. And uh, now at the end, we should close the tonogram with two uh, straight vertical lines. So it means that the meaning is completed here. And uh, let me read the tonogram here. Uh, I work at school. So, uh, but uh, one and the same um, Declarative sentence uh, can be pronounced with low rising nuclear tone too. When? Let's clarify this one. When the information you heard is. Uh, uh, when the intonation you heard is. But one and same uh, declarative sentence can be pronounced with low rising nuclear tone too. But when? Let's clarify this matter. Uh, when the declarative sentence... But one and same declarative sentence can be pronounced with low rising nuclear tone too. Uh, let's clarify this. When exactly uh, affirmative sentence can be pronounced with low rising nuclear tone? When it implies, when the declarative sentence implies a question remaining, when the speaker is not sure about the information he or she heard. In this case, the speaker uses low rising nuclear tone in the declarative sentence. For example, I work at school. Here, I will write one and same sentence. I work at school. Uh, and uh, uh, as we have just listened, I used low rising nuclear tone in this uh, sentence of mine. I work at school uh, because, uh, as uh, the I and the ad are uh, structural work, they should remain unstressed. And as for the school, this is the nucleus of this intonation group, and uh, we put the stress mark over low rising nuclear tone here. This is a stress mark of low rising nuclear tone. And uh, uh, here, let's Intone this sentence according to these stress marks. I work at school. This is a tone mark of low rising nuclear tone. It starts from the low pitch level and reaches up to the medium pitch level. Then at the end, we should close the tonogram with two straight vertical lines. And uh, it means that the intonation of uh, as for the intonation of declarative sentence, it may be uh, used low fall and low rising nuclear tone in affirmative sentence. And uh, the next type of a sentence, uh, according to the purpose, is interrogative sentences. Interrogative sentences, you know that in English language, it is distinguished four parts, four types of interrogative sentences. So the first one is general question, the second one is a special question. And uh, the third one is the affirmative question, uh, sorry, uh, alternative question, and then the last one is disjunctive question. So uh, questions which begin with any kind of auxiliary verbs or modal verbs are called general ones, you know, from the uh, grammatical point of view, if we analyze. Uh, but here, as we are having phonetic lesson, we should speak about the intonation, just intonation of uh, the types of questions here. So for example, uh, as for the general question, let's write here some general questions. Uh, for example, can you speak? Can you speak French? Can you speak French? Or uh, Have you 
started your work for example have you started your work have you started your work uh, and the last one for example uh, will you will you go to the to the cinema to the cinema will you go to the cinema here let's put the stress box here and uh, according to normal sentence stress uh, uh, can, uh, the modal verbs and the auxiliary verbs uh, will take stress only at the beginning of the sentence. And you know that auxiliary verbs and the modal verbs may come at the beginning only in general questions. So that is why they take stress. And as uh, you is included in the structure words, it should remain on stress. And as for the speed, it is word, it will surely take stress. And as for the French, this is the last uh, stress syllable of the intonation group. And uh, we put such kind of stress mark here. And this, this is the stress mark or the low rising nuclear tone. Uh, and the next one is have. The auxiliary group have is stressed here. You is on first and is started stressed. And uh, you are on stress and your work is surely stressed as it is. Uh, uh, last stress syllable of an intonation, which is called the nucleus. And uh, will is uh, stressed here, mu is on stress, and the go uh, stressed, and the two, the, they are structured words, so that's why they should remain on stress. And the cinema is a noun, and that's why it uh, is stressed here. We put the stress mark over low rising nuclear tone. For example, low rise, yeah? Low rise. This is a uh, so here I will show the stress mark. This is a stress mark over low rising nuclear tone. And uh, as for the tone mark of it, this is the tone mark over low rising nuclear tone. It starts from low pitch level and then reaches up to the medium pitch level. So it shouldn't uh, reach up to the highest pitch level uh, as it is low rise. Then that is why it should start from low pitch level and should reach up to the medium pitch level. And uh, let's uh, make the tonogram of the first question. Can you speak French? Can you speak French? As you have just listened, I used low rising nuclear tone in my sentence. According to these stress marks, now I will intone the sentence. Can you speak French? Can you speak French? The, uh, the next sentence is have you started your work? Here I will intone the second sentence. Have you started? The word started consists of a two syllable, uh, and the first syllable is stress, and the second syllable is unstressed. That is why started Tid is unstressed here. Have you started your work? Here, we will close in the tonogram with two straight vertical lines. Have you started your work? Have you started your work? And the last question here, will you go to the cinema? Will you go to the cinema? And here, we will intone the last sentence of ours. Will you go to the uh, cinema? Consists of three syllables, cinema. The first syllable is stressed here. And that is why, cinema. So, uh, if we uh, analyze these two uh, words, for example, here work, uh, here French, and here cinema. These words are the last stressed syllables of an intonation, which is called the nucleus. 
uh, in all of them are through the one and same uh, type of a stress mark, the stress mark of a low rising nuclear tone. But as for the tone marks of them, they are uh, differing, you know. Here, uh, this is like this, like this, and uh, here, uh, it's a bit different. Uh, when the nucleus consists of only one syllable, the tone mark will arise way put like this. Uh, and when the nucleus consists of more than one syllable, here we should uh, mark the stress syllable with a straight horizontal line and uh, not here, not below, but only above it. Uh, in order to show the rising nuclear tone, we should put um, we should show unstressed syllables uh, above the nucleus here. Uh, it means that this is also the tone mark of a low rise and that this is also the tone mark of a low rise. It is, uh, will you go to the, will you go to the cinema? Will you go to the cinema? And here we will repeat these three general questions once more paying attention to the correct intonation in them. Can you speak French? Can you speak French? Please, let's repeat uh, after me. Can you speak French? Can you speak French? The next one is, have you started your work? Have you started your work? Repeat after me, please. Have you started your work? Have you started your work? And the last one is, will you go to the cinema? Will you go to the cinema? Will you go to the cinema? This is the intonation of uh, general questions. But uh, one and same general question can be pronounced with a low falling nuclear tone too. Let's clarify. When? Uh, when the speaker is not interested in your response, or when it is like a rhetoric question. So usually such kind of general questions uh, may be pronounced with low, low falling nuclear tone. For example, uh, uh, I may say, have, uh, have you got something in your eye? Have you got something in your eye? So uh, I know that uh, your response will be positive and you, may, you will say yes. So in such kind of cases, uh, we may use low folding nuclear tone in general questions. And uh, let's continue then with the intonation of when second type of a question, alternative, uh, special question, let it be, special question. So uh, if we analyze the special question from the grammatical point of view, Questions which begin with the interrogative words and interrogative pronouns are called uh, special ones. And uh, let's write down some special questions here. For example, the simplest one is, what is your name? What's your name? And the next one, let it be, where? Do you live? Where do you live? And uh, the last one, uh, let it be, for example, how do you get? How do you get? How do you get home? Let it be. How do you get home? Or how do you get to the university? So again, let's put the stress marks. Uh, interrogative words, interrogative pronouns take stress. Uh, it's uh, not stressed here. Your is not stressed, and the name is stressed. And we put a, a stress mark or a low falling nuclear tone as the special questions are usually pronounced with the low falling nuclear tone. The next one. How do you get home? And. Uh, let me pronounce uh, each of these special questions with the appropriate intonation and then you will repeat after me again. What's your name? What's your name? The next one is, where do you live? Where do you live? And the next one is, how do you get home? How do you get home? 
So as you have just listened, I used only low falling nuclear tone in all these special questions. And uh, let's intone these uh, special questions with the, uh, the uh, according to the stress marks here. What is your name? And the next one is where do you live? Where do you live? And the last one is how do you get home? How do you get home? That is all. And uh, let's uh, clarify again. Special questions uh, besides low falling nuclear tone can be pronounced with low rising nuclear tone too. But when? When the speaker is eager to know something and when the speaker shows a great interest to know something. In this case, special questions are usually pronounced with the low rising nuclear tone. For example, what's your name? What's your name? Or where do you live? Where do you live? Like this. Uh, or how do you get home? How do you get home? Like this. It is uh, here the speaker is eager. How do you get home? How you get home, or the speaker is eager what your name is, or where you live. The speaker wants to wants to know the information, and so that's why it's showing great interest to know something. And uh, only in this case, no rising nuclear tone can be used. For example, <clears throat> what is your What's your hobby? What's your hobby? Here the speaker is eager to know your what your hobby is. So that's why uh, he is pronouncing or she is pronouncing the special question with the rising nuclear tone. And uh, the next one, uh, let it be. Um, how? How do you celebrate? How do you celebrate this holiday? So, in fact, it's a special question. Celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. So, this word consists of uh, the Two, two syllables, cela, cela, and three syllables, cela, great, cela, great. So here, the, not the first, but not the second, but the third syllable is stressed. And uh, the most right pronouns also take stress and ask for the word holiday. Uh, it is being pronounced here with the low rising nuclear tone because the speaker is eager how you celebrate this holiday. Uh, Again, let's repeat these questions with the low rising nuclear tone after me. What's your hobby? What's your hobby? Or the next uh, question is, uh, how do you celebrate this holiday? How do you celebrate this holiday? Uh, it is, I'm eager, how do you celebrate this holiday? So that is why I'm pronouncing these uh, special questions with the low rising nuclear tone. Again, let's uh, into these uh, questions. So, what's your hobby? What is your hobby? Uh, here again, the nucleus consists of uh, two syllables. When, when it consists of only one syllable, the tone mark will be the tone mark of a low rise will be like this. Uh, but here, uh, the nucleus consists of two syllables. So that's why the stress syllable is marked with a straight horizontal line and above it, unstressed syllable in order to show the rising nuclear tone. And the last one is how do you celebrate this holiday? How do you celebrate this holiday? Holiday. That is all. This is the intonation of a special question. And uh, let's continue again. And the next type of an interrogative sentence is alternative question. alternative question. So, if we analyze the type of question from the grammatical point of view, 
Alternative questions consist of two parts, uh, which is connected with each other with the, con uh, with the help of the conjunction or. For example, I was student or the doctor. I was student or a teacher. Or uh, do you speak English or French? Uh, or um, I were at home or at school. So like this, uh, as you have just listened, I use uh, so it appears to that final separate intonation group here. It means it appears sequence of tones here uh, from the grammatical uh, from the grammar of the English language. We know that it is distinguished uh, the term uh, sequence of tenses in uh, subordinate clause and in uh, principal clause. It is. Uh, in complex and compound sentences, we spoke about we usually speak about the uh, sequence of tenses in uh, grammar of the English language. But in phonetics, uh, when the sentence consists of two parts, we will usually we usually speak about the sequence of tones. It is. Uh, let's write some uh, alternative question here. Ah, you. Uh, are you a student or a doctor? So auxiliary verb R takes stress here as it is coming in initial position in a uh, uh, question here. Student, student. Uh, student here, we should put the stress mark over the rising platoon here, and uh, here, doctor. So, as I have just told, uh, the alternative question consists of two parts. This is the first part, and this is the second part. It is, uh, these two parts are connected with each other with the conjunction or. And what about the intonation of this alternative question? So, uh, as you have just uh, listened, uh, it is alternative question. Um, in pronouncing the alternative question, it is uh, it appears sequence of tones here. The first part of the alternative question is pronounced with the low rising nucleotone, and the second part is pronounced with the low falling nucleotone. I was to that or a doctor. So let's intone the sentence according to these first marks. Ah, you asked you. Dent, I was student. So uh, here uh, it appears a non final separate intonation group. This is with the help of this curly vertical line, we mark non final separate intonation group, which is called a syntagm. Uh, or a doctor. Doctor. Are you a student or a doctor? I was student or a doctor. Uh, or I went home or at school. So let, let it be not ah again and this time. Okay. Can you speak? Can you speak French? Or Spanish. Can you speak French or Spanish? So let's intone again according to those stress marks. Can you speak French? This is syntax. Or Spanish. Spanish consists of two syllables and uh, the first syllable is stressed and the second syllable is unstressed here. So, uh, re uh, repeat. Uh, I will uh, read aloud these sentences, uh, alternative questions, and you will repeat after me. I am a student or a doctor. I am a student or a doctor. Can you speak French or Spanish? Can you speak French or Spanish? So, dear students, this is the intonation of uh, alternative questions. And now, I will explain you the intonation of the disjunctive questions. 
Disjunctive questions are the last type of an interrogative questions. So they are also called tag questions. So uh, if we analyze the disjunctive question from the grammatical point of view, if the first part of a disjunctive question is positive, the second part should be negative. Or vice versa of it, if the uh, first part of the tag question is negative, the second part should be positive. But uh, the intonation is one and the same. Here, as we are having phonetics, uh, practical phonetics of the English language, we should speak about the intonation of it. So, uh, you can, you can, uh, you can uh, speak, okay, you can speak English very well. As the first part of this uh, this gentle question is positive, the second part uh, second part sh should be negative. Can't you or cannot you? Uh, if it's uh, one word, we should write the full form of it. That is cannot you. Well, you may use abbreviation too. Can't, for example. It doesn't matter, but one uh, it may be it should be used one and same intonation. So pay attention to the structure of the uh, disjunctive question. So uh, it consists of again two uh, two parts. Uh, while the first part of the disjunctive question it looks like a statement, declarative sentence. So that is why the first part should should be pronounced with the low falling nuclear tone. And to ask for the second part, it looks like a general question, and we know that general questions are usually pronounced with a low rising nuclear tone. Again, it appears sequence of tones here. The sequence of tones, as you have just listened, are uh, low fall plus low rise. The sequence of tone, I will, let me write down here the sequence of tone, low fall plus low rising nuclear tone. This is the sequence of tones in disjunctive question. And uh, you can, you can, uh, as for the uh, modal verb can, uh, in the middle position in a sentence, it uh, should remain unstressed. But uh, only in uh, initial position, it may be stressed in general questions. Can you speak French? Can you speak French, for example? Can you speak French? Uh, but here it is coming in middle position, so that's why it uh, is unstressed here. Speak surely stressed and uh, English surely stressed, very adjective surely stressed, and well is adverb, and it is also included in notional parts of speech, which is called content words, and so that's why it is also stressed. And uh, it should be pronounced with the low falling nuclear tone, uh, as it is the last stress syllable of this non final intonation group. We put the stress mark over low falling nuclear tone here as it looks like a statement and the statements are usually pronounced with a low falling nuclear tone and to ask for the second part cannot you uh, this is a uh, tone mark over low rising nuclear tone let's intone these according to these stress marks then you can speak English English consists of two syllables and the uh, first syllable is stress and second one is unstressed very well and again uh, nine final uh, separate intonation group it forms here and cannot you cannot you in order to show the rising nuclear tone we put the unstressed uh, syllables above it in order to show the rising nuclear tone because this is uh, to stress mark over low rising nuclear tone and this is a tone mark over low rising nuclear tone here and then the uh, nucleus uh, is, is consisting of two syllables here so now let me uh, repeat let me uh, read aloud this uh, this gentle question once more and you will repeat after me you can speak English very well, cannot you? You can speak English very well, cannot you? And as you have just listened, the first part is being pronounced with low falling nuclear tone and the second part with a low rising nuclear tone. So let's write one more didactic question here. Uh, you 
You teach. You teach English. At at uh, college library. Don't you? As there is no any uh, auxiliary verb in this uh, sentence, uh, so here in order to form a progressive sentence, uh, we should uh, use the auxiliary verb do does here. Don't 